this generative art aspect is, you know, gets criticism sometimes because, you know, it feels like the computer is doing most of the work, which I don't think is true. But I think it's really about, you know, the artist is constructing a potential landscape of things that can be built on it and then understanding. And then we can see, you know, what, what, what ends up getting built. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So welcome. Um, I know we've spoken before, but not as much. I really don't know your story. I don't know a lot about you, but uh, I still like, you know, like your work. Um, and we still banter on threads. So uh, it's nice connecting you, with you finally. Yeah, yeah, same here. It's uh, pretty, I do a lot of my, my communication uh, kind of in public. A lot of big, uh, big person in the DMs. So <laughs> it's, uh, what you see is kind of what you get usually. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. But like, you know, we have some time. To like you know dig deeper into like you know what apart from your public persona, just get to know you a bit more. Uh, so thank you for being here. Uh, just uh, people just want to say hi to Meesley, uh, Shubham, and Domain Dominic. Sorry, uh, for being here. Uh, if just if you can share the Twitter spaces uh, that we are live, uh, it, it will help us and get more people in the thread. Uh, in the talk and uh, Zinc, thank you for being here. You are the first <laughs> NFT economics. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, you know, how does that title come from? There's a bit of, like, yeah, a bit of story. Part. Like I have uh, a more traditional background um, in economics, work for a central bank, work for a, a big private bank for a while. And, uh, you know, over the COVID uh, period, you know, everyone's looking for a change. Kind of NFTs have been really excited. Was uh, you know, obviously really excited in NFTs and understanding this market. And so, you know, I had opportunity to to start to build something with uh, Nameless. And so now we have our little newsletter and and um, and Spaces show, and we're building some more stuff on top of that. But it, so, I, but the idea is like we were thinking about, you know, that it's such a nascent space, right? And there really isn't. Um, you know, we don't really have. We, like, I think it's 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 more now. But when I started, there was not really you know very much systematic analysis of the markets, and not very many people trying to understand kind of you know what 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 what's going on outside of maybe just tracking a few projects here and there. A lot of anecdotal thinking, a lot of you know traders with rules of thumb. So yeah, just trying to like bring some structure and and thought about you know I don't know if that's what we've done yet, but but. Uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, that's what, that's what motivates us. And so, yeah, then we figured like yep, and no other NFT, there's no other economist with that title. So you know, we just threw that, we threw that title together. <laughs> Cause uh, I don't think there's anyone that's really focused. Like, obviously there's crypto and if there's economists that focus on crypto, but plenty, right. But uh, yeah. not the NFT market itself. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And it's quite, quite interesting, right? Like, because, um, it sounds so silly, right? Like uh, another, right? Like I think what's his name, the super guy? No, no, Spider. Uh, Sp XX. He was like, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. I am a macro analyst. <laughs> yeah. like, no man, like Zing is getting paid to do it. <laughs> like, so, so if you find a job uh, which will pay you, you can call yourself that, a macro. That's part analyst of the speed of um of uh how fast things have moved, right? Like six months ago. Yeah. Um. You know, now we have like such like we've, there's a number of great analytics tools that have been built, like the guys at Nansen putting together um, like good good analytics tools for for, for tracking the mark, uh, like tracking things in the market, and you know, flip finance and and then Dune Analytics, and so there's a number of these tools coming online, right? That that now finally people can start to think of these things more systematically, and you're starting to see people um, kind of do that more. Um, but like six months ago, like there really, even six months ago, there really was, you know, not very many people thinking about this at all in a systematic way. Right. So it's, uh, it's just crazy how fast the space has moved. Awesome. 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 So Zink, uh, tell me something, uh, like, you know, when did you first discover NFTs and tell me when did you fall in love <laughs> with them? I guess there's, there's a gap there. So I first, the first NFT I ever bought, um, was uh, actually this Block Cities project from 2019. And uh, I didn't even know about NFT Twitter. I don't know if that existed yet. 
Um, and, but it was just this idea of like being able to mint something <clears throat> it seemed really cool. Obviously, that wasn't even the first thing I didn't know about CryptoPunks back then or the other, uh, you know, I, I'd heard about CryptoKitties, obviously, um, but I didn't really get it. Um, but it just felt fun to like mint something. And I, I think that's like part of the the magic of, of uh, I think that hooks a lot of people early on is is uh, this idea that you can send some, you know, crypto to a smart contract and it just kind of spits out uh you know a token back to you associated with something right so obviously like the block cities project never went anywhere and i didn't really dig too deep into it yet because uh um but then i i kind of returned back once you know we had the COVID lockdowns and and i was working from home and i moved to i moved to halifax for the for for most of it right so i was just kind of in a new place with covid not a lot to do and so i started, started you know tinkering around and yeah, I started finding like like when I really started like I just started started make the make NFTs just started making the most sense in terms of like what what does future adoption of crypto um, going to look like? You know, like the DeFi world was really was really on fire in that in that 2020, and you know I understood like okay, there's all these new things, but I'm just trying to think about how do I explain to my family or to friends that don't care about crypto why they should worry about you know farming some uh, tomatoes and on sushi and and, and these crazy uh, these crazy rates, it, everything kind of feels very Ponzi and like they're not going to believe it. They're not going to get into it. But then if you have an NFT, it's like okay, well you get something. You put you're 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 buying goods on the blockchain, and so then that's the light bulb kind of clicked, and I kind of just dove head first after that. Awesome, awesome. That's pretty pretty interesting. So uh, you, you your uh, profile also says farming tulips. <laughs> And I assume, like you know, you are, the cat in your uh, cover is also at a tulip farm. What's all the all that about? Well, you know, what's the myth? There's a, there's a, with it, with, with, there's like the tulip tulip um, bubbles, right? In the Dutch, in the, the Dutch tulip bubbles in like the 1700s. I don't even know what the exact century was, but back in the day, and uh, you know, it's just kind of the classic example of, uh, you know irrational exuberance and, and, and financial bubbles. And, and so it's just kind of funny to me. Like there's a lot of argument that the, that the tulip farming stuff wasn't actually a bubble either. And, you know, there's, it's not, it's not all obvious that it's just all vapor, but it's just funny to me because there's a sense of like NFT markets still have this, we're just like, we're just chasing something we know is kind of there. We know that this is going to be big at some point. Um, but in the meantime, there's like it's we're getting completely ahead of ourselves. I think in a lot of ways, I'm um, trying to find that next thing, trying to find that, you know, next Pokemon or next Marvel, um, and we want it now. And so people are paying the prices as if these things are already there. So you know, there's a there's an element to that. I think in all crypto and, and NFT markets, but it's just funny to me. I find I don't know. That's that's kind of a it's just a play on a play. Sometimes you feel like you just that's what you're doing, right? You're 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 buying into all these things and hoping that they're just going to blow up for no reason. And so then the Dutch cat, right? The, yep. cat, the cat is a, has a Dutch hat and the, and the, the farmer's thing. <laughs> so he, he kind of t- kind of farms his tulips. Very cool. Uh, that's, that's super interesting. So Zink, you know, uh, I, I, so maybe I'm not following the right amount of people or like, you know, Maybe it's just me, but like, you know, even me and a lot of my followers, they have very little clue about gen art on, uh, like, you know, uh, on, on, on the blockchain, right? Like, so can you walk us through, like, you know, firstly, your, when did you first interact with gen art and tell us like, you know, why, what is your obsession <laughs> with, like, you know, generative art? And then, uh, we can go ahead, like, you know, just talking about the timeline. So like, you know, we, your first interaction first, would you like to define what generative art is? Yeah, because it's... maybe like, you know, even not... crypto punk is considered yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I go on, say go I'm on. like an expert, like a, I'm not an art history background there's people out here definitely that would know um but i think with the, the kind of a really simple like simplified definition of gen art is just art that's created with some rules and structure predetermined and so it's it's less about um so the artist figures out the system beforehand and then um, and, and then produces work um based on that system right so um you know gen art has existed um uh, 
I've, I've read somewhere somewhere that there's like a cave painting from like 70,000 years ago that's just a it, it's some grids and some lines right and you could you could almost argue that's somewhat gen art, there's some gen art aspects to that and so like the, the I think like, so it's in general, yeah, you have this kind of like, it's a, it's about, it's about applying these rules to, um, to create art, right. So that, that once the, once the artist has defined the rules, then they kind of let the algorithm run. And then, and then we see on the other end, um, what got produced. Right. And I think the big, uh, the big advent, like big advancement in the, in, in, in the field was when people could start using computers. Cause then you can, you can, you can create these systems and then you can, you can have aspects that, you know, have randomness or different starting conditions. And, uh, and then you can see what the uh, end result is and you can check, you know, tons and tons of output to see what, what, um, what, what people, um, what you, what, what, what the computer ends up producing. Right. So then you can kind of like explore the space of your, your system um, with the computer very fast. Right. And uh, then I think like the next, the next piece, so like when when people were doing this, so that this has been doing this has been going on for like seventy years, um, but people of uh, uh, you've always you know it's it's always been difficult because you still have to print it. Like before, there was you know before people were using digital art and before people were you know cryptographically signing things, it's like we had uh, people would tend to like you know pick the best outputs and then that would be what would be on display at the museum or the art show, and then we have the advent of uh, art blocks, which kind of puts that, you know, kind of puts a, a, an additional restriction, I think, on, um, on, uh, on, on what the outputs can be, right? You don't, you don't, you no longer get to choose. Like it's, it, I think it fully decentralizes the, the system or fully autonomizes the system in which, you know, you, you as an artist have the rules and then you get a limited number of um, outputs and then those are the outputs and you get to, you don't get to choose if there's some errors or if there's something that doesn't make sense. So you really have to fine tune your, your algorithm. You have to really think about not just what the full space of the, of the, the potential artworks could be within, um, within a particular system, but also um, you have to be able to think about, okay, well, what edge cases do I not want to see? How do I make sure that those don't happen? And so for me, that's just really just, it's kind of, I think the one of the, mo the more interesting avenues to generative art has kind of gone down is this. Uh, Tyler Hobbs calls it like long form generative art, where you, where you, you you're, you're basically constructing a full set of rules and then you're just letting it go and it's completely out of your hands once you press uh, start. And so, like uh, I think you know, work, which I don't think is true, but it, there's a little you, you do see old people feel like there's some detachment between the artists and the work. But I think it's really about, you know, the artist is constructing a potential landscape of things that can be built on it and then understanding, and then we can see, you know, what, what, what ends up getting built. And so I don't know if that's a, a kind of a rambly description for me, but for me, I think it really connects really well with, uh, with blockchain because we have this, also this minting process, like I talked before, where you as a, you know, collector just send some crypto, to the uh, to the algorithm, and the algorithm kind of spits back you a piece of art. You don't know what the art's going to look like when you send it. The artist doesn't know what it's going to look like. And you know, to me, that's I feel like very there's some magic to that. There's like a participatory participatory aspect um, in the creation of the art that I think uh, that I think uh, is something that kind of resonates with a lot of people. That's why we've seen this kind of explosion in the last year and a half. This podcast was possible because of our sponsors, Brave and Unstoppable Domains. More about them next. Crypto scams are like box of chocolates. You never know which one you're going to get. Especially if you're using a crypto wallet, which is a browser extension. You run the risk of attacks like phishing scams, account spoofing, data leaks and theft. The best way to avoid getting attacked is using Brave Wallet. Brave Wallet is the first secure crypto wallet built directly into a browser. So no extensions required. With Brave Wallet, you can buy, store, send and swap assets. You can even manage your portfolio and NFTs all in one place. Whether you're new to crypto or a seasoned pro, it's time to switch to Brave Wallet. Download Brave at brave.com slash web3 with the and click the wallet icon to get started. 
You know what's the worst part about crypto? These long and complex wallet addresses. They can get so confusing. I know, you hate them too. What if I told you I replaced my long wallet address with dhirajshah.nft? Yeah, that's my name. All thanks to Unstoppable Domains, they're the number one providers of NFT domains. With Unstoppable Domains, you don't have to worry about renewal fees because you get to keep your NFT domain forever. You can get an NFT domain as well, maybe a .crypto, .nft, .x or something else. Go to unstoppabledomains.com right now and get your NFTs for as low as $5. See, this is my opinion, I could be wrong, but just the surprise element also plays such a nice, uh, like, you know, role in our buying habits. Uh, like, you know, let's say you don't know what you're going to buy, right? Like, compared, <laughs> like you know, yeah. you have a uh, thousand, let's say, thousand pieces of gen- generative art, which a coder or a artist has designed, and you have a idea how it's going to look overall. But like, you know, each piece is different uh, compared to like, you know, going to a museum, browsing multiple things and then picking something you like. Uh, like, you know, you just get something out of the blue and maybe like, you know, if you feel some kind of attachment to it. Right. Like, so it's it's quite interesting. There is a, a, a theory about like, you know, just lottery ticket. Kind yeah. of thing, right. Like, you know, if you get something. I think there's, a, yeah. there's definitely an element there where there's the lottery aspect and kind of kind of if you have a gambler's instant or a gambler's uh you know tech or whatever then maybe maybe that kind of scratches that itch a bit but i i still think the the interesting thing about generative art for me is i think it just combines all the aspects of what kind of nfts have brought to um kind of brought to uh like the digital art space right like you in the past, you know, if you're a digital or a generative artist, maybe you had to plot the stuff, or maybe you drew it according to some rules, or you know, so there still had to, you still had to put it on canvas or still put it on some paper at some at some at some level, and it was difficult to just keep it in its digital form, right? So it's it's you know, even though it's computer art, it should not you know, to me, it feels like it should naturally stay, you know, its its medium is some you know the computer, so it should should stay on the digital in the digital medium. And so NFTs obviously provide that ability to, um, you know, create that, that, that artist signature that just kind of says, you know, this is, I don't know if it's artificial scarcity, but it's also, it's, it, you know, it's a digital signature for the, of the artist saying, this is the print that, that matters. Um, this is like an official output. And so you have that ability that, you know, NFTs have opened up for almost all digital artists, you know, being able to sell their digital work and people, you know, having faith and being able to collect digital work knowing that they can they can you know resell it and there's proof that they are the ones that bought it and own it but then also you know with the smart contract idea with you know sending like the art blocks so especially with the art blocks uh, setup which they pioneered where you send you know your eth into the smart contract and it comes back um, with a piece of art you know that's just just that just feels like it's different than say when you're buying a piece of art on super rare or foundation or, or, uh, KO, right. Where, you know, you, you, you know what you're getting and, and it's more of a transaction, right. There's no really no, there almost isn't a need for the smart contract. Like you could, you know, in all, in all, um, in all, uh, you know, intensive purposes, you could just, you know, send the person cash and they would just send you, you know, transfer you the NFT back. Right. And so there's like, there's that aspect. And then I feel like there's that participatory aspect that, you know, you're the one that minted this one. So there's a, there's a, um, there's a provenance to who minted, uh, the, you know, who you were there when it was being created at the beginning. So you're, 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 you know, attached to that creation of that art right from the beginning and that participatory, participatory aspect, I think also is like really unique to, um, web three, right? Like that's where I think, you know, it's people, just in general, Web3, people want to feel not just as buyers, they don't want to be just collectors. They want to feel a part of the whole um, the whole system, right? And that's why people expect airdrops. That's why people um, kind of talk about community a lot, right? It's a very social um, it's a social process. And so then I think that it just hits all three of those, um, those marks, right? And so that feels to me like it is the kind of artwork that most represents um, 
most represents uh, the you know the NFT or NFT art um, kind of revolution. Like obviously, there's lots of other aspects to NFT art that 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 have a that have a place that are important. Um, but to me, I just feel like that's just kind of a culmination of all the pieces that kind of make Web three so fun, right? Yeah, that make that makes sense. Um, I think we'll we can clip that part. Uh, it will be quite interesting, and uh, yeah, it's 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 something new that like you know the participatory aspect, which is not, I don't know, right? Like I don't know enough that if it has existed in traditional, where like you know you as a collector buyer are not just like oh I have financial. Uh, incentives in mind but also uh, like an emotional thing where like you know you minted it first or like you know you bought it from uh, I don't know right like maybe Zinc sold it and I bought it uh, That that's kind of uh, interesting dynamic or like you know this is the like you know I bought it at Mint and I've never sold it that kind of situation so um, I, what also I notice is like you know with uh, uh, being an NFT collector you are incentivized to like you know promote the art you own uh, in or the artist you collect from in uh, in a certain way so that's also uh, interesting Zink, I want to ask you like you know what was your first interaction with like generative art or, or, or on NFTs yeah, I'm trying to think if it was um, my first, my first, I vented uh, a crypto blots, I think. For like, it was funny, probably priced it in, in uh, I don't know what the way to pronounce it, DAI, D-A-I, the, the, the uh, yeah. centralized dollar. Um, it was like $60. I remember I had to, I had to like, I had to like convert some ETH into, the, into, into that in order to be able to, I thought it was pretty funny. Um there's a lot of process to it, but yeah, it was my, that was my first one. It was fun. So I, again, it's like something that just gets you hooked, right? And then, so once you buy that, then you think, okay, well, what's the next thing I can mint? And then you start talking mm-hmm. to people who are, you know, because you know, they got there like maybe a month or two later than a lot of other people. So then you're like, okay, well, what's what's the interesting stuff? What should I be buying? What should I be looking for? What's coming up? And then, uh, you know, that that that, that year oh, just is a complete whirlwind, ride, right? Like it just uh, looking back now, I think it's everything's kind of cooled down. I think, I think to some extent, there was that bubble in August, and it kind of really hurt, um, hurt like the platform Every- after going like afterwards. Uh, in terms of uh, you know, people had a bit of difficulty on the secondary, and you know, people turned sour. But uh, but like, <clears throat> but I don't know if you still look at the if you still look at what uh, what things are priced. Um, you know, you get really good art on there that's still priced less than what you can see at like some of the, you know, you can see at your local coffee shop. So, you know, I think, I think there's a, I think there's a, still a magic with, uh, with art blocks that, I, that never goes away. So, you know, the way back in like January, February of uh, 2021, mm-hmm. it's just, a, it was just a lot of fun to be able to like this, like, how does this technology ex- even exist? Like it's, it seems so seems so different than anything you've ever done before, and I think that's like what you're saying. Right? We, like, you know, people cared about all this stuff in the past, right? Like, you've always been able to commission an art piece. You've always been able to. So, you've always had. A, there's always had a potential for participatory um, parts to it. People have always cared about provenance and who's owned what and when and these sorts of things. Um, but I feel like with NFTs, you have all that, but then it's just kind of all out in the open. Right. Like I would have no idea if I was to look, you know, how it's not an easy task to be able to go find for any particular artwork, um, you know, all the list of owners and all the, you know, there's there's databases out there, but then you have to pay to get access to the databases. Um, you know, you have to kind of rely on a lot of experts. Um, there's really not a sense that you can do all this stuff on your own. And I think with NFTs, like you just, there's a much more kind of, you can dirty your own hands and figure it out and and you get kind of you know deep into it without needing like permission from other people for access or or uh, opinion or or uh, these other things right so i think i think that's why we're seeing a lot of stuff that's you know did not see that a lot of success in the past um do well now right and so uh you know like i think then i think yeah so maybe i'm rambling but i think i think there's like NFTs have been able to take a lot of things that we've already already always had, but like put them together in such a way that um, you know kind of creates a new market, 
and creates a new base of collectors. Like most people, I think collecting NFTs, we're not collecting art before. Um, and so, you know, I think, you know, to me, that's just very interesting. Yeah, I mean, just to give more context to, like, I never, I, I never understood art huh, for the longest time, right? I was not even interested in it uh, because I'm like, just what? But like, you know, just knowing about NFTs, I did, did go into a deep down rabbit hole of learning what is art, right? Like, because I'm like, if I don't understand, like, you know, how the value of art is determined, if I don't study history, I don't study, uh, like, you know, what people do, or like, you know, why people spend money on buying traditional art, then I'm never gonna understand, right? Like, so I spent three, four months just reading about traditional art and all that while I was reading about NFTs. So <laughs> I, I think that yeah, kind but- of helped. <laughs> And I think yep. like yeah. resources are out there. And I think the people who work in galleries and work as curators and work as professors of art history, you know, have a lots of interesting things to say. And then like, there's a huge world of, 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 of art. Right. And, you know, it's kind of, you, on one hand, you're like, okay, why, why is it that the general public doesn't seem that interested? Um, and, you know, why, do, even though the resources are not that difficult to achieve, like you can find everything on the internet. But I do think that there's a sense sometimes of not, not maybe not elitism, but like there's a, another level of like, Oh, you know, we know best and, um, and maybe they do, but there's, it kind of puts people off, especially I think um, people who, you know, like have, have ever come, come from a very like tech background and, you know, think that they can figure things out. And I think most people, most people can figure things out. And so, you know, we, you have to wonder like, why, why wasn't there um, more interest? Like, why do you, what, like, it's just kind of interesting to me to see like all these people who never really had much interest in art now, you know, spending so much of their day thinking about, um, thinking about uh, um, art and, you know, maybe informing now forming a lot of and, and what's happening. I think is a lot of people are forming their own opinions about what's good and bad art. And who knows if, 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 if those, are always the most well-formed opinions, but it's it's interesting to see people kind of you know start thinking seriously about about uh, you know what they what they like, and it, this is something with NFTs that's always kind of bug, bugged me. Not about the NFTs, but the way the response to NFTs have a lot of a lot of times always bugged me is that you know for any particular example of someone using an NFT to sell art, there's always someone that can say, well, you know, we could. You know, you don't need the NFT to do this. You could have a piece of paper and a signed certificate, right? You could have, you know, people do, you know, authentic, authenticity, um, you know, checks with, with, you know, collectibles. And, and obviously art has, you know, people have to evaluate whether it's a true piece or not. And so, and then, pe- you know, art, you know, dig, uh, digital art has been bought by museums and, and, you know, people act like it's, people kind of, uh, I think in that world, get defensive about like, oh, of course we cared about digital art, right? But then, you know, the question is always is on where, where was the market before, right? And so I feel like with NFTs, it's like, it's not inventing anything necessarily new. It's just being able to put it, all the pieces together and that's, and create some excitement about something that there wasn't really any excitement about it before. Yeah, I mean, I, I just wonder, right? Like people who are listening. Uh, so first of all, like, you know, guys, if you... Uh, are enjoying this conversation do share do tag me tag zinc and let people know that like we're having this conversation and uh like you know just put uh like a some kind of emoji if you were not an art collector before nfts right like uh, as a collector i do mean collector right like just buying few pieces from your friends may may not count right like <laughs> so yeah, if you can do some kind of reaction, it would be nice to see. And if you do like a heart react, uh, we would know that like, you know, you have collected uh, before. So yeah, just just want to gauge the room. And uh, Zinc, tell me something about art blocks, right? Like, why is that like the biggest thing in gen- generative art? And can you tell us a little bit about the projects uh, which are popular on art blocks? Yeah, sure. I think the main... Uh, so I think like what I've talked to you before, just in terms of the te- technology, it's very interesting. Um, I think people really enjoy that, the minting process, right? And, and but I think also the quality 
of the artists, I think, early on. Uh, so you have like Dimitri with the Ringers project and Kettle with the Archetype project. And and uh, um, I think uh, you know, Aaron, Aaron Penn's uh, with his um, apparitions. Um, and so you have like, you had, you had early on some really strong digital artists support the platform and like they didn't, I don't think they made a ton of money um, with their original mints. Um, the projects early on minted pieces were minting for under 0.1 ETH. Um, and so, uh, you know, maybe on royalties now people have done well, but, but, uh, but, um, you know, early on, I think the, the, the key, the key com combination was like this really novel mechanism for generating art, which I think clicks with a lot of people, this idea that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, the computer generates something and then I'm not selecting from that the set after the fact the computer generates and is what you get. And there's kind of finality to it. I think that kind of feels a little bit, you know, make, makes a little bit more sense to a lot of people when trying to like get their heads around what generative art is. And then again, there was just the strength of the early, um, early artists. I think that kind of sent it another, you know, once it got some traction with some major collectors, then the, the platform took off. And now I think it's just kind of the go-to place. If you're a, if you're a generative artist, you need to, you need to have a mint on art blocks. It seems like, um, so then it, you've seen like, not just on the curated side where there's lots of, you know, they have a really interesting process of, you know, it's not necessarily, um, the most famous people that get to mint on there. Um, so they have an interesting curation process, um, that kind of does help new, new artists kind of, uh, kind of get there, but then, but then also you see like really well-established generative artists from even before the, um, before any of this, um, getting a chance to, uh, you know, deliver some interesting artwork. So like, um, uh, I always, I would never, I don't know then it's, I think like LIA, Leah, I don't know if you say Leah or LIA. It's hard. It's hard with the names when you're just reading everything, <laughs> but, uh, Leah something, um, you know, Gener of artists for been doing this for decades and and has a really interesting project like uh, little hillsides and so you have you know i think you just it's just it's kind of become the focal point and you, you you can kind of see like there's people do try to produce stuff on other platforms and you know there's i think the project that they i think they you know encourage this and they they, they, they do you know the technology is all kind of open source but the and so people do you know this kind of minting on on other platforms but i think you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's kind of established itself as the kind of the, the the leader, um, the leader for it. But you know, there's a number of other platforms now that that also allow you to mint Jennifer. Art. A number of DAOs have been running with fingerprints, and Flamingo have been running their own generative art projects here and there. Um, and so, I don't know. Like, I think I don't. I'm not sure. I think it's just one of those things where it just kind of establishes itself as kind of the kind of the the place, the place you want to be, uh, if you are, if you are a general artist. Yeah. Mm, interesting. It, it's like the Holy grail right now. Uh, I get it. So Zing, tell us about some pieces, uh, you own of NFTs generative or not, uh, like, you know, which you are like, you know, proud of, or <laughs> like, you know, you're just happy that like it's in your collection. Yeah. Like I really like, um, Aaron Penn's work. So I have a number of apparitions, and he has another project rituals and another project um, returns. And I think, you know, those, those are all just very, they kind of, yeah, I would just like, they, they're just, they're, they're top tier, um, top tier pieces. So anything by Aaron Penn. And then I really like um, this project on Entre, Tiempos. And so, um, you know, they're actually one, something I think it's very undervalued. So if you're interested in like looking at, uh, you know, some entry level ability to buy some entry level uh, uh, generative art from a top tier um, uh, project, and I think Entre Tiempos is is the the one I would choose. So I have I you know I continue to collect those. Um, I don't know. Like it's hard to know. If the, I, I, with for me, I, I really I try to collect broadly. I have I have a lot of one on one art. I have a lot of collectible stuff. I have a lot of not everything is generative art, uh, and so. You know, mm -hmm. like I have a piece by Jack Kaido, which I really can. She's a digital abstract artist. I really like. Um, 
I don't know. I have like uh, I guess my main yeah. my main proud thing is I have a uh, proper set. Like it, there's there's three projects that were launched on our box on the first day, the the Chromy Squiggle, the the uh, construction token by Jeff Davis, and the and um, uh, Genesis by DCA. And so uh, having those three, I think, is kind of a nice badge for uh, people that nice. want to uh, <laughs> people want to be be you know part of that community. It's not, a, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's, it took a while to get there, but pretty cool. Pretty cool. Do you, do you own any Fidenza? Uh, no, I did. Yeah, I did. I sold it. <laughs> there was a time, it was a, it, 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 there was a point right with Fidenzas that, uh, that, uh, they were over, over the top, um, in terms of price. They were, during the top of that August bubble, they were like the number one piece, right? And so they were routine, yeah. routinely so, going. Tell it did you sell it during the August bubble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I didn't like to. I didn't like selling it. I have the print, which is uh, the the guy bought it for me. Didn't ask for the print, so I have it. So I have that hanging on my wall. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't have the NFT anymore. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, okay, uh, talking about like you know, I've seen your tweets. Uh, did you go and delete a lot of your tweets? Oh, I always do that. <laughs> like, uh, uh, ah, I just leave. I, I try okay, to okay. keep that clean. I guess. Just uh, otherwise, otherwise it just gets just completely overwhelming. I don't know. I find uh, I get it. I Twitter. To, I wanted to pin. Yeah, I find Twitter to be like a a conversation. Um, and so mm -hmm. like I think uh, I think you know it allow Twitter for for me allows me to think out loud. And so then if you use Twitter as a conversation, and so you just kind of you know tweet your thoughts and what you're thinking about at the time. I think it kind of encourages other people to start thinking about stuff as well. Um, and then, uh, but then, you know, like things don't make sense always two weeks after the fact, or my opinions change all the time too. And so, you know, it's not really, yeah, for me, it, I find Twitter is like a conversation tool. And so it's just, it's just like having to talk with, with you and me right now. Yeah. Uh, and like, I don't know who said this, but I think I, this keeps coming up. Like Twitter is like a big group chat, yeah. right? Like which anyone can join, anyone can leave. And I love Actually, it. Actually, I, I agree. Like I, with Twitter, there's always a, there's always a lot of like discussion right now about you know what what should be changed and and obviously with Elon buying and these sorts of things. But I I, I find I find that like people like to have a lot of criticism. I think, but I find that for the Twitter kind of got one thing really right. Right, like you have you have this system where it's just you sending messages out, right? And, you know, you maybe follow people, maybe, you know, but there's no, like, there's not really any groups. And every time they tried to, like, create groups or rooms or these sorts of things, I don't think people are really using them. Maybe lists or yeah. people, yeah. but most people aren't. But you still have com distinct yeah. communities, right? So it's like the communities are very, um, they're kind of, uh, they just kind of, they're emergent, right? They don't, they don't, there's nothing particular, you know, it's different, very different than, say, the Reddit or any other, uh, these other, um, like even Facebook, right. Where everything kind of happens in groups, right. And, and everything gets, so then I think the topics get predefined. You know, if you're in a group, then you feel like you have to talk about only that. If you're in a channel and Reddit or a, a subreddit and Reddit, right. You, you might actually only be able to talk about the thing that's in the subreddit, right. You might actually, mods might actually delete things. Same with discords, you're in a channel, the channels for a specific purpose. With Twitter, it's just kind of, feels the most free to me it's just you kind of you know if something i say i might be directed at a particular audience right and i might be within a particular community but anyone potentially could see it and i could interact with those people in a completely different way than i would interact with someone else right there's there's no walls and so to me i feel like that's really i don't know i i, I hope they don't change much with twitter because i do you know like there's always going to be problems with everything but i think like there's there's a magic there that that I don't think any other social media has gotten correct. And so anyways, <laughs> that's why I see like, that's why I like Twitter. That's why I like the I, I love back it. and forth and the, yeah. the conversational aspect. You're right. It's like a group chat, but it's, it's more than a group chat because it's like, it's, it's weirdly filtered, but not really, you know, like if, like, if it was a big group chat, like if you're in telegram and you have like a thousand people or 2000 people, it's, it's a nightmare. So there's still Twitter's <laughs> still able to like kind of, properly filter things so i love it. i love it and i think like you know it's perfect i i, I don't find i mean i don't think edit button is such a huge deal <laughs> no i don't know why 
Like, yeah, I, I made a typo. Fuck it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't. It doesn't really matter. Like, if you really needed to change it, just change. Like, delete the tweet and retweet it. Right. Like, people are too. But you're, you, there's no counter. Like, you don't know. There's no global counter of likes that you're really showing off. Right. So, it doesn't really matter. But like, obviously, no one cares. But I don't know why that's such one feature everyone has. I think people. The people who want it think think a lot of themselves that anyone else cares. If anyone else cares about their typo. <laughs> no, you, you know I, I have like made so many typos. My tweets have still gone quite. Yeah, because people right? can like, read, think... right? Like there's some temptation, <laughs> right? If you ever seen those like things where, where um, you can scramble the middle of the letter, right? Of a, of, a, of any word really, and like so you can write a whole sentence with every word, but the middle letter is all scrambled, and you can still. You can still read it. Yeah. No one's really reading. I, I, I believe this English teacher for instilling, instilling this fear of grammar and spellings. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, it doesn't. Any, I think I have uh, one more question. Like, you know, I think this is going to be like, you know, uh, like few in, important line of questioning, I guess. So let's say you are a generative artist, right? Like you're a coder, you're a designer, whatever, right? You want to get into NFTs? What do you do? Uh, so, I, the first place I would start is um, the FX Hash, um, the FX Hash uh, um, platform, which is on Tezos. So, uh, very cheap um, in terms of you know gas, obviously, and um, it's very free. It's just a complete open platform in terms of uploading your art and. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, that's a place to experiment, I think. Um, and so, and, and people do, and collectors, art blocks collectors, and other gener- gener- arts, generative artists, art collectors um, are looking on that platform as well. And so I think there, you know, there's a number of great pieces that have, that have, uh, that have been put up there and then it led for more exposure for the artists and, and the see. So I think like that's the first thing is to look at that F- F- FX hash. Um, and then, yeah, I think the other things is to just kind of get involved in the community, talk talk to people that have similar interests. Um, so the Art Blocks Discord has a Block Talk and a number of other channels that you can reach out to people and talk to talk about what you're doing. Um, and so then you know being part of the community. So that's another big aspect of NFTs. I think you know do you have to think about like what's what's what what. Are, just because something is an NFT doesn't make it valuable, right? There was a set, I think, you know, a year ago, people kind of felt that a little bit because everything, um, you make anything an NFT, it's all, oh, it's an NFT now. Um, now, I think, you know, you still have to make a case. And one of the one of the big advantages of NFTs is that the communities are so kind of, um, they're very active and they're very, uh, you know, people will will promote other people's work and, and there's a sense of camaraderie and sense of building something new and being a part of something um, new and different. And so, you know, I think investing in that community aspect is really important too. And so being able to, you know, make your collectors feel like they're part of kind of your journey as well. Um, I think also, also is something really important to think about. It doesn't mean you have to be overly social or like there's plenty of people who are, who are, who are shy, but I think it's, it's still important to, Kind of recognize that this and the value of NFTs is is kind of this public social nature um, of this art movement. So uh, you know it's hard, it's hard. To, don't don't try to don't yeah don't forget about that. Um, and then out, yeah, outside of that, just share your work and and um, and and you know look up resources. There's lots of techniques. I can think. I'm trying to think of a good. There's some. There's there's a number of like good resources out there. Um, in terms of the different techniques that people can learn. So it's just, you know, just like any other art form where, you know, there's people need to know how to do like flow fields or any other particular, uh, you know, specific technique. And so, um, you know, there's like always got to be working on your craft. But yeah, like I think, I think the the space is one of those spaces where you can just dive in and, uh, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, see what happens. I think that's kind of the mentality of the space too. Just kind of just to start yeah. working. And I have, guys, uh, I have, like, you know, pinned FX hash 
uh, what Zink was talking about. It's a great platform. It's on Tezos. And uh, it, it's nice, uh, Zink, that, like, you know, we have gone from just being, like, ETH maxis <laughs> to realize, like, you know, a lot of things are happening on other chains, which are also quite interesting. And, like, you know, people are not... Um, I mean, I know not a lot of people care as much uh, as they do about ETH, these things, but like Tezos ecosystem is quite interesting. And the barrier to entry is also quite low and you, you have a lot of collectors as well. So quite nice to see. Um, I have the same question when it comes to, let's say, um, I am an NFT collector. Um, I don't know, right? Like maybe... I have minted few of these NFTs, uh, but like, you know, most of them are PFPs, mm-hmm. right? But how the fuck do I get into gen art when like, you know, all the blue chip pieces, be it Squiggles, be it Ringers, <laughs> be it uh, uh, Fidenza, they're just like so expensive, right? Like, so what? what's my play now? What can I do? Yeah, I don't, like, I think, well, I think right now uh, there's a number of, if you... So in terms of an investment, like I think it's always tricky to know whether something is going to eventually recover. I think, um, you know, so there's a lot of negativity right now towards towards art blocks and other generative art pieces because there's this per- perception of oversupply and and a perception of, uh, you know, there's not a lot of energy necessarily um, around the project. And people are feeling down. But I think at those periods are the periods where, you know, you're going to always find the best deals. Obviously, if you're trying to be an art, it's a very different game to be an investor in art. If you're trying to think about, so if you think about collecting, if you just want to collect something, then sure, just, you know what your budget is. And is this something that you want personally to have? That's not really a big decision. It's just no decision. That's the same decision as you go to a, a gallery in your local town, right? And you want to buy an artwork to put up in your wall. Um, but if you want to be an investor of, in, in, in this sort of art, I think then, you know, it's a different, it's a difficult thing to just give simple rules of thumb because I think you need to really refine your taste. You have to really think about, you know, what is the market's taste. You have to think about, you know, what are people going to see differently five years from now than they're seeing now. Um, and, uh, you know, those things are not like, I think something that's is easy to do and is easy to evaluate as say like PFPs, which I think you have a lot more, I think you have a lot more examples in PFPs of like what a project that could be successful looks like before it's successful. And so it's, I think there's an easier decisions to be made and you can, you can, you can, you can be a little bit more um, mercenary about it. I think with art, like there's so much about when, when you're thinking about art that matters is what matters. Not this is not necessarily what the thing is happening right now, but also what's the context that this art is going to be looked at five years from now, 10 years from now. Um, and so, you know, then you have to make an assessment about, okay, well, is that, is that going to translate into some, you know, people are going to want to pay for, pay more for it in the future. Right. So, you know, these aren't very easy decisions. And so then you have to have your own taste. You have to have, you know, a sense of, um, a sense of, uh, you know, more than just, you know, the aesthetic of it too. You have to think about, the context of how the piece was created, what's going to influence, what's it, what it influences. It's a part of a, a chain of, of um, important pieces over time. Is it going to be, you know, something, uh, is it going to be, yeah. So is it going to be something that people, uh, people want to have a piece of in the future? Right. Uh, and so, you know, it's not, as, it's definitely not as you think, but unless, when I say that, say that I look at some of these pieces, like I said before, like you, you can get really good um, generative art pieces for like five hundred thousand um, dollars, which you know, like I think personally that this is kind of the beginning of a kind of a new movement of art. I think this is going to be something that connects with people um, in the future. I think we're going to see, you know, wow, we're going to see much more mass produced versions of these in the future. They're going to see we're going to see a lot more buyers. Um, buying the cheaper stuff and this i think this is all going to be part of all the stuff that's coming out now is all going to be part of uh kind of this bigger um explosion of uh of gender art in the future and so i think then that there will be that value there right like why you know if you think about like a baseball card like why is the Honus wagner card so so expensive right it's not because it's old there's lots of old things 
right? It's not because it's necessarily rare. There's like 50 of them or something like that. So it's, you know, it's not even particularly rare. Um, it's because millions of people still buy baseball cards. Like baseball is still very relevant, right? At the cheapest level. And so you don't need everyone in pop culture to be buying, um, you know, ten thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar pieces of work for something to be valuable. But if everyone cares about that thing, then of course a few pieces that are like kind of the grails are the ones that are gonna um, people who have some means are gonna want those, right? And so you know, people want a, that attachment to the culture, and they're gonna be able to. Um, so you. The thing you got to look for, I think, is what is the culture going to be ten years from now, twenty years from now? I don't know. I have a personal belief that gen art will will have a place in that, but you know, it's just a huge risk, anyways. But but yeah, like other than that, I don't know in terms of which piece to actually buy. Just you know, I think I think we're at the point where you know, buy within your means and and try to develop a a, a taste. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> easier said than done though. Exactly. <laughs> yeah but again right like good things take time good things take effort good thing take a lot of depth uh when it comes to thinking right like if it was easy uh then like you said right like a lot more people would be doing it and then that might not make it as valuable <laughs> if it was easy uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's you're, good you're not going to make a ton of money pick with the consensus yeah. with the consensus picks right so you know you do need to take some risk yeah i uh, think zinc i have a question tell me about some projects uh it doesn't matter what the floor price is right like which you found uh, super interesting right could be contract mechanics could be the art could be uh, the artist could be anything right like so just some stories uh, of like you know these any projects generative non-generative which uh you were like holy fuck like you know how did no one think of this or oh this is so cool um i don't know like i really like that schlom was this schlom or the, the the car thing did you know like the one the the uh where they blew up a lamborghini uh i'm not aware i'm yeah, not aware find a timber of the artist um but I thought that was very interesting where the guy, the artist, I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's a guy or girl, but the artist uh, um, blew up a Lamborghini and then sold the pieces as NFTs and had this really interesting auction mechanism Wow! Uh, for each of the pieces. It was kind of, it was kind of just something I'd never seen before. I think, I think, I think the, the things that I'm most interested in is when people are doing something different um, with the technology and mixing the technology and the and the and the and the art. So I think like like so there's definitely like room for a pure digital artist to to produce digital art and then sell it as an NFT. And I think you know there, there's going to be some really important people in this movement that that did that, but didn't do anything necessarily with the technology. But I do think that the most interesting stuff to me is like these kind of performance pieces, um, which uh, which. I feel like we're just scratching the surface on it. You know, the smart contracts are very powerful, the things they can do. I think like, um, uh, ACK, right. Uh, had an interesting one where he killed a piece and then someone bought it and then, and then, uh, it came back to life as a different piece. Like there's, uh, let's see if you can find him. But, uh, you know, I think that anyone is playing around with the, with the smart contract aspect um, of the work, right? Like that's the power, I think, of um, um, kind of you have this new canvas, a new type of material to to to, to do art on, and uh, so that's just more, the most interesting things to me are going to be these kind of performance pieces, which I you know I don't think have, we haven't really seen scratch the surface on. Interesting. So. Yeah, like, so basically, I mean, this is new to me. Uh, like, some artist blew up a Lamborghini yeah. <laughs> and sold uh, these NF, uh, Lamborghini pieces as NFT. That's so, like, you know, <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know yeah. where the project And went. Yeah, I agree, right? Like, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know where sorry, the project's sorry. gone, but uh, it's just, with me, it's so funny. It, yeah, his name is uh, S-H-L-O or zero M-S. So slums. Oh my gosh. S H. Okay, uh, Ashidosh, can you find that uh, yeah, and like pin it if that's fun? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. 
yeah so <laughs> zinc uh, that's pretty cool uh, so the, we have a person artist ego artist ego um do you have do you have a question Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I have one question. So um, I uploaded my first piece on Foundation and, you know, it's hard to get sales from, from the first piece. And I wanted to ask, uh, do you think it would be like a good thing to add utility to one of one art? Do you think it will, you know, like help getting sales and, and you know, people uh, noticing your art? Or do you think people sh- should just buy it, you know, f- for the art? Yeah, it's a really tough question, right? I think... I think um, stuff that has utility um, it could go either way, but I think that you know if it's if it's an interesting if there's some new interesting mechanic or um, you know like clearly then people there's going to be some more interest I think in in trying to um, you know in, in interacting with that right. But I think I think it still needs to be intentional. I think I don't think there's um, I don't know if there's like any uh, like it's not something I don't think you can be shoe, shoehorned into just like a piece that doesn't necessarily require it. Right. So I think like you have to just decide like what's the type of art that you um, want to produce and then just, and then just um, put your head down and, and, and and just commit to that. Um, I don't know if there's any, I don't think there's any, there's no great advice other than just sharing your work and, and, and maybe, um, you know, pricing things, what you think it's uh, the appropriate price and interacting with people and, and, um, that's the only way I know to like, yeah. uh, yeah. to, to increase, like, you know, I've not, I, I don't really face this decision myself. Right. So I don't, uh, um, you know, I don't have great advice about how to, how, how, how to, how to start an art career on, 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 on NFTs. But, you know, I think like the artists have done, yeah, really it's, well. it's yeah, the artists have done really well to me, uh, the ones that like interact with people regardless of, you know, what their sales are, right. They, 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 they inject themselves into the community and, and um, I think that's like the easiest way to kind of, you know, that's one thing I know about NFTs. It's a very social, um, um, it's a very social uh, community in the sense that you know, artists and collectors are always talking to each other. And uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so, yeah, that, that's like, that's, that's my advice to get known. But, I, you know, I, in terms of like the details of things, I don't think a partic- I'm not particularly interested in just utility for the sake of utility. Like if someone can come up with something really interesting and different and that, you know, that might be interesting to me, but, uh, mm-hmm. but it's not, it's not something. Yeah, to so, to fix and, it. and also uh, what can no, it's you, not something you repeat- to fix it? I think like it's not, it's not. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for the question, buddy. Um, okay, cool. Zinc, we have, uh, like, you know, just, uh, okay, do you want to talk about, uh, like, you know, what, what does Nameless do? What's Look Rare podcast all about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so Nameless, we are, um, um, we're like an NFT tech company uh, to help, help people uh, produce uh, NFT collections. And so we have a number of, like, clients that we've, help create the smart contracts for and done a lot of the back end. Um, and, uh, so we're continuing, that's the, the, we're, we, so we're, we continue to be like the, I think the idea is to get people, uh, to like, you know, we, I'm not the best pitch person for the company cause I'm not in the tech end, but we do a lot of, yeah. So we do the back end for, for, for NFTs. We help people who want to create NFT projects. Um, we help them, create those NFT projects that maybe they don't have the technological skill sets in order to do that. Um, and then for me, on my part at Nameless, I, I write on the NFT uh, economy and I, you know, advise and consult with clients about, you know, the current state of the market. And then I, uh, and, you know, I have my little, I have, a, I have a show actually tomorrow at 3 PM with uh, Micah Johnson uh, with the Aqua dreams. So I'll be talking to him about that. Um, and so that's why, that's why I do a nameless. And then at, um, uh, at, uh, looks for a podcast. It's just a number a couple of, it's just a bunch of our friends, uh, that I've been together. So I, I think that's like the biggest piece of advice to give anyone in the space is find a group of friends that are the same level as you doing the same things as you, that you can grow together. Like these guys, we've been together for like over a year now. And, uh, you know, it's just a place to like our podcast, just places like just talk about the NFT market, what's going on. And, uh, you know, we just, are constantly in the DMs, always ask questions about 
you know, what's going on with different projects and double checking our thoughts. And, you know, you need to have that kind of thing if, uh, if you're going to survive, because it's a very, very stressful space uh, if you're alone. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, cool. So, Zing, again, very generic question, but uh, I might as well ask it. Like, you know, what are you excited about? Like in in the NFT space, uh, near future, future, or even right now. I don't know. It's like it's really tricky. I think we're at this like cusp right now where there's all this promise, and I don't know if we're there at the execution yet. And so it could go things could go either way. It's like I really like some of the stuff that some of these profile picture collections are doing. You know getting into the like, traditional um, uh, producing, like, you know, more going, going for more mainstream, but, you know, I still worry that a lot of them, you know, they're, they're set up too small to like really, really explode. Like they need to like these, these, you know, if you want to be the next Marvel, you need to have, you know, a hundred million people care about what you are doing. Um, and you know, the, the, the collections are all in the tens of thousands. Right. So, you know, there's just such a, such a huge gap there. So in terms of like, I can, it's, I think we're just almost, someone will figure it out for me. I think the other thing, I think the thing that I'm like the most interested in, um, but I don't know if it's how well it's going to do, but is, uh, these kind of storytelling projects. I really like the idea of, it feels very kind of like under basement, underground, um, games workshop type, you know, people, people creating lore, people creating, I don't know, it just has that very kind of, there's a sense of uh, um, kind of new, new, new stuff coming, com, coming out. That's that, you don't know, we don't know where it's going to go. Um, people just created some prompts and, and, and hopefully the community can kind of produce something interesting. So there's a number of these projects that I think, you know, have a really big hope um, to create this more interactive communal experience. Which I think is like the key to all NFTs is, is how do you leverage that social aspect? So yeah, maybe storytelling thing is the is the thing I'm looking hoping that works. But again, it's like I think there's just so much um, there's so much promise still in the air, and it's it's not clear things really executed on those on those um, on those fronts yet. So we'll we'll see, I guess. But I think it's just 2022 is going to be very interesting. Yeah, that, that does make sense. And like we've not seen a lot of like, you know, lores being created, a lot of stories being created. So there's not much substance to like, you know, what is happening. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting area. I, I personally think, you know, that's something we should be looking into. And I'm also thinking like, you know, how do we uh like, you know, get more writers, get more um like, you know, these narrators storytellers uh in 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 crypto right like because a, a bunch of my friends are these and like you know can we provide a service where like you know you get everything made right like your entire universe made by someone else uh for you so like you know that's something i'm exploring personally because like you know i have resources at hand um yeah but well, well, what do you think about that Oh, sorry. I just was, uh, I missed. That's okay. That's I missed okay. your last, uh, that's, that's, sorry. Just yeah. Looking at no, 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 no. I just had a, a notification come up. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's okay. Out. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, I know. I was just saying like, you know, I have a lot of my friends who are like, you know, uh, g- like who are into game designing and, hmm. uh, like, you know, story and like all these things so like you know i might consider like you know doing services for like these nft projects like if they want their universes built laws built character arcs built and all that yeah kind of stuff. i think with um i think there's just a lot of there's a lot of opportunity outside of necessarily you know traditional art within the NFT space like i think you know we're going to see something like we're going to see writers um, figuring out the right way to use this technology um, and benefiting from that. Um, you're going to say, like you say, like these, these kind of story designers. I think, uh, you know, there's a there's a sense that, the, again, like these are things that, you know, we always could do, but there's a sense sometimes with Web3 that it kind of turns things over on its head that people, 
uh, the creators tend to get a little bit more power in terms of what they want to work for, what they want, uh, what they want, because not necessarily because like um, there's not some magic with it, but I think it just, the market opens up. And so people can kind of finally see that there is the demand for this sort of thing. Right. And in the past, I think a lot of the structures were such that that people couldn't really see all the potential buyers or maybe the buyers themselves colluded a lot um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, who to hire and who not to hire for particular projects. A lot of like IP, right. is really controlled by a few major corporations. And so, you know, they have a lot of power over the people that create this stuff. Right. Um, and so, you know, the something about the web three aspect is like, you know, we already know there's a ton of creativity in the world. Um, we know there's tons of fan fiction and we know there's tons of um, people doing stuff for free in terms of story building and these sorts of things. And, uh, you know, I think there's kind of embedding this kind of, you know, the NFTs kind of and, 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 and blockchain kind of embed this kind of market component and payment component uh, to these things. I think that it opens up, you know, so many opportunities for these sorts of creatives to like realize that there's lots of people that want the services of a creative and that they're not stuck just working for, for, you know, uh, one or two people and that, that, that take advantage of them. Right. And so I think in that sense, things kind of, um, things kind of open up and people can kind of feel like, you know, the true, I think it's more like a true, um, you're going to get more of a, tr like the, the true ideal of gig work where it's not, it's not, you know, you're at the mercy of these companies that want to just pay you nothing it's i think it's more closer to you truly do have the freedom to choose who you want to work with and when how much time to put into it and 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 it's really open about the payments and the, you know everything's kind of public in terms of who's getting paid what and i think um you know i think there's i think so in terms of like the market for creatives there's i think just so much potential here i don't know what it looks like necessarily but but i think there's uh there's um definitely a definitely something to like kind of watch for to see what happens. All right. Anyways, I think I gotta go to wrap up. I think pretty quick. Are you still there? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I was <laughs> muted. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I was, I was just saying we'll close this as you have to go oh, and yeah. like you know we are uh, eight minutes over time. And I just want to before that like you know just thank you uh, all for being here. Axi Kawai Cyber Shakti, uh, Speculator, Kamsok Nishita Dun. Um, museum, Prabjot, Maitre, and Bram. Like, if you learned anything out of this, if you enjoyed listening to Zing, listening to me, go and share, uh, tell, like, you know, what you learned uh, or, like, you know, something interesting you heard today. Share it with everyone. Go follow Zinc. Zinc uh, posts a lot of nice stuff. Uh, Zinc also has a podcast. He also has a newsletter. Uh, so go subscribe to that. And uh, thank you for being here, Zinc. Yeah, no, great. It was awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yep. All right. Bye. Take care, guys. Good night uh, and have a good day. <laughs>